Hello everyone, welcome back to Space Corp. Uh, so uh, I started uh, playing this um, on Wednesday. Uh, I played through the first part of it. I uh, got a, a more, uh, <coughs> I'm gonna have a bigger rules explanation in that video, but that's up on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, but um, if you're just uh, joining me for this, this is the second part of the the three parts of the game. Uh, this is the Planeteers era. Um, so I'll give you a really quick potted summary so we don't spend hours doing the whole rule explanation again. But um, we're playing a corporation that is uh, heading out into the solar system. Uh, the first era, or the first board, was the Mariners era, and that was in the uh, inner solar system out to Mars um, and uh, this is the second era so we finished all that off sort of went out built explored worlds built bases um, and space stations and all that sort of stuff uh, and uh, the aim of the, the game is to just get money basically so that's this track over here which I, I put on this board um, so this section uh, going around, I put it sideways here, uh, is the, the victory point track around here, it's the money. Uh, at the moment, the competition, uh, which is the uh, solo AI, um, you know, AI in quotes, it's not really that intelligent, but it's, uh, it's the, the opponent, um, is in yellow. Uh, there are two points ahead of me. I am playing the purple. Um, so uh, we've got the contracts here. Uh, so, um, these are things, these are basic kind of goals that we can go for. Uh, let me see if I can bring this a little bit closer here. Um, so these are goals that we can go for in each era. Uh, in the last era, uh, we got four contracts sorted out. So it's like the first produce action, first base on Mars, genetics cubes advancing, etc. This era is the Planeteers era, so we're going to be looking at this middle section here. Um, so it's going to be first to get two progress cards, four asteroid bases, bases in three regions beyond Jupiter, two bases beyond Uranus, three bases in one region, three non-start Planeteer cards in the infra slots, which are down here, and bases on four sites containing water or life. Whoever gets those, get some money bonus uh, as well as whatever bonus they would have got for doing that task so they'll, they'll go up on the victory point tracks basically uh, but putting that here for now because um, as you might have noticed there's this board uh, well, this game takes up quite a bit of space this is actually one board this section this was the Marin Mariners board but we flipped it over and it's got a whole bunch of stuff on it for uh, the Planeteers and the um, Staff Era's era, which is the next era, uh, which I'm probably going to do, I think, on Sunday, but stay tuned for that. Um, so under here and under my little uh, HQ player board here is a whole bunch of stuff that is for Staff Era's, which we're not going to, we don't need now, we don't, um, we're not going to look at that. So, um... We're uh, we're just covering them up for now, just because it means that we can fit everything on the board on the uh, the screen. Uh, next era is going to be you know things are going to have to go off the edge here, so you'll have to bear with that, I'm afraid. Um, but um, the things that have been added now, so as we're coming out into the outer solar system, which is what the Planeteers era is, so we've got the asteroid belt, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and then out to the Oort cloud, where all the comets come from. Um, there's uh, more spaces, more, more um, sites to go to. Now we've got, uh, not only have we got E1 and E2 sites, but we also have E3 sites, um, so that's on Europa, Callisto, Ganymede, and Titan that have the E3s. Uh, and they're even more, they've got even more sort of awesome stuff on them, basically. So they're really rich targets. Um, everything out here otherwise is an E2, so that's, that's pretty nice. All the asteroids here are E1s. Um, so that's 
you know, it's kind of ranking how cool they are in terms of exploration, basically. Uh, and what you're likely to find. Um, so the there are a few additions to the rules out in the planters here. It mostly plays the same as Mariners, but there there's a few differences. Beyond the asteroid belt, you see these are red lines here. These are the radiation areas. So anything out here is high radiation. That means that any move or any portion of a move that it, that enters these areas from inside here is irradiated. Any move that's completely in these areas is irradiated. Uh, any build that is in these outer areas is also irradiated. And what that means is unless you have a shielded move or a shielded build, uh, you will uh, be in trouble, basically. You lose two money for the move that you do because basically it's down to... You're sending people out into these high radiation environments without any protection or in, around, enough protection and shielding and they're all getting like you know irradiated and cancers and all sorts of horrible things there's lawsuits there's all this sort of stuff so we don't want to do that really ideally um you know that that would be bad for us because losing too money money is our victory points so we'd be losing victory points so that's not good so uh, shielded moves are, uh, like this is my hand, um, at the moment none of these are shielded, but if they were, the move and the build along the side here would say shielded. Um, okay, so as long as a part of the move that you play or the build that you do is shielded, it's all shielded, it's fine. But you have to have at least one shielded thing to, to make that work. Um, there are bases as well out here. There's new bases. There's a shield factory base, which obviously makes shielding possible. Uh, yeah, so you basically build a base in a region and um, or you build a shield factory base in a region and that shields everything in that region, uh, which is quite nice. Um, there are exploiter bases, which can be used to like, you know, terminally exploit a world to basically suck all the resources out of it and you never can use it again. Um, and there are secure bases which give you money for every other uh, like opponent base in the area as well in the region but we'll we'll get to them uh, a bit later on the other big difference is that uh, over here we've got these uh, genetic adaptations which are in the brown and the blue breakthroughs so we get those this is where the genetics and the revelations uh, wheel come come in. So that's down here. Um, if you uh, watch the last video, you'll know what this is about. But basically, there are cards that uh, give you genetics. Now, there are also going to be cards that have revelations uh, think actions on them. Uh, and both of those, whatever the number is next to them, it will move the cube around this wheel that number of times. And then when that... Uh, when that cube gets round to the top again, that triggers you getting a, or you being able to pick a card. Uh, so when the brown cube gets round to the top, you get to pick one of the uh, brown cards. When the black cube goes round to the top, you get to pick one of these. So the brown ones are adaptations, black ones are breakthrough. Uh, they're like te technological breakthroughs, basically. And they're going to be important. Um, so we'll... Uh, We'll go over that uh, in a minute um, when we when we come to it, basically. So the way this works is that um, I can I draw a hand. So like this is my well, I have a hand of cards. So this is the ones I start with. I'm starting with a move four uh, that is upgradable. And I'm starting with an explore two or a build three. My um, I can do the actions like move, build, explore, uh, produce, genetics, revelations, etc. Um, they'll all be written on here. They'll have a number next to them. Whatever is required, like an E2 requires you to have a total of two in your explore. So if I have, like if I had an explore one, I wouldn't be able to explore an explore two site, but because I've got an explore two, I can do that. Um, I just have to have a total number uh, on the cards I play that equals or exceeds the value that is required to do that task. 
So like out here, for example, on Triton, it's a B10. I'm going to need a total of 10 build um, cards to play. Um, and uh, that will let me build on Triton. Um, I also have to be there. I have to have explored already and so on as well. Um, so I have my hand. I also have my HQ, which is this thing. And the cards on here are my HQ cards, my infra cards, the infrastructure. And some of them, you see, you can upgrade. Like it says, may upgrade as infra on here. Uh, so at some point during the game, I can take this card and put it down on here over one of these, because these are from the previous era. And that will let me basically give me this like move four for as long as it's in my HQ. Like that's that's going to be there. So if I put it here, for example, uh, then without playing any other cards in sub subsequent terms, I always have uh, a move total of seven at least to, to play through uh, or to play with. And I can add cards to that as well. So that's really handy. But that's uh, that's an upgrade action to do that. Um, so that's generally how the game works. Uh, and the, uh, the, what we're doing, what we're playing against is a competition, which are this deck over here. So, uh, if you notice on my cards at the bottom here, there's a little, um, uh, little gray box here that says like offers and then a number and then something like Luna LP five, which was from the previous board, like Luna Lagrange point five. So whatever this says, we ignore the rest of the card, like when we draw it from the competition deck. We ignore that. Whatever this says is what the competition does. And then they just do it. You know, we obviously we have to do it for them because they they don't exist. It's just me playing against the board, basically, against the game. Um, so I, I do their action. Whatever that is, is is what they do. I have to just deal with it, basically. So uh, it's quite interesting. It's a really neat mechanic. Um, I actually really love this because it means that it's not predictable. Uh, a lot of solo games are, uh, they have like, f uh, that I've seen anyway, we've got these flow charts and, and, you know, complex tables and things. And it's, in some cases, they're really, really predictable. So, like, oh, I know this bot is going to just go, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do this action always if that's there. So I'm going to, I can game the bot that way, right? Here, it's, a, it's drawn from a random deck of cards. I have no idea what, what it's going to do. Um, so it can be quite unpredictable. It can really foil your plans. It has foiled my plans on several occasions. Uh, it nearly foiled my plans last game or last uh, session. Um, there was a, an amusing incident with, uh, I think it was a, a hack, yeah, a hack card that I was terrified would show up that would completely destroy me, but it didn't, thankfully. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it, it's quite, uh, it makes it, uh, keeps it quite interesting, basically. Um, so, um, I guess, well, what else should I do? Um, oh yeah, I did make a few mistakes last, uh, last stream. I've corrected them now. Um, for one thing, the camera was, um, really flickery and, and gross and horrible. There was a lot of screen tearing. Hopefully that is all fixed now. Uh, it looks like it's all good. Um, so apologies for that. Just, you know, there was the first board game stream I've done basically. And there was a lot of technical issues that I've, I've had to sort through, but I think I've got it all sorted out. Um, in terms of the game, uh, I think the biggest issue was that, uh, well, the biggest issues was that, um, the bases that I was drawing for the, uh, uh competition, uh, I had the planeteers bases in the, in the cup here as well. I basically draw them from a cup, um, and, um, they're all in here basically. Uh, and I had the uh, Planeteers ones in there as well, which I shouldn't have had in the Mariners era. Uh, and I did end up drawing one of them, um, which, um, you know, it shouldn't have been able to happen. But that's fine. We can just say that was just another base that was drawn that didn't have an effect. So that's fine. Um, biggest thing that I forgot was that uh, the opposition had built a base, a base on Mars first. 
and they get a uh, contract for that, which is this one. So I've given them, uh, that means they get three points, uh, and I have given them three points, so if you uh, compare the, uh, uh, the the score here to the uh, end of the last video, uh, they were here before, now they're up three points here, so I've corrected that. Um, and there was also a, a really stupid thing that I did where I, I, I picked up one of their existing bases on the board and then placed it under a, uh, uh, on North Mars, basically, under their cube, uh, which I completely shouldn't have done. I had drawn the base already. It was just sitting down here, and I completely blanked on it. So, um, But no harm done with that. Uh, so that aside, uh, enough yapping from me. Let's just get on with it. So... First thing in planet is, uh, uh, during the setup here, I've set everything up. Um, the uh, Because I had the first Beyond Marker last turn, or last uh, era, so I was the first one out um, past the Asteroid Belt, uh, that means I get a bit of a head start here, and my two cubes end up... Um, one, one ends up in the inner solar system, and the other one gets a head start and ends up not only on Ceres, like the biggest asteroid in the uh, asteroid belt, not only there, but I believe they also uh, flip over the discovery tile. Or, you know, they basically place and flip over a discovery tile. So I just put this here to remind myself to do it. So this is, uh, it's an abundant ores. Uh, is a P2, so it's a, that's a good producing site. It's a good uh, place to put a refinery. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, and with a, ref with a refinery on it, that include, basically increases it to a uh, P3, uh, which means if I do a produce action, I will get three money from that straight away. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, so the first Beyond Marker is now out here in the Oort Cloud. That is, as I said, that's where all the comets live, out beyond the edge of the solar system. First person out there gets a head start in the next era, which is quite important. Um, it's quite a big head start. Um, I'm just making sure all the other things are good. Bases are down there. The teams are in the boxes. Everything's there. So we're good to go. Um, right, so first thing that happens is we, um, the competition takes the first turn. So here's how that works. So uh, this is competition deck. This is also a preview of the Starfarer's deck, which we're going to be, I'm going to be playing with next era, but the competition gets to play it because it's got all the planetary, all the planetary stuff at the bottom. So ignore all this. Just looking at this where it says offers three, four, and a little planet symbol. So what that means is that the uh, offers cards up here get removed on spaces three and four. So that's uh, one of mine. Um, and oops. Uh, um, mm -hmm, sorry. Got my, uh, my phone sound on. There we go. So, um, yeah, so the offers three and four get removed, and uh, the planet symbol, what does that mean again? That meant, uh, buh, 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 buh. right, so now, um, before the, in the, uh, the Mariner's era, uh, build, explore, and, um, uh, move uh, upgrade cards that were removed uh, gave the competition money like it earned money for doing that this era we've got a different set of things down here so uh, you, you just can't see that but it says minus one money for genetics and plus one money for revelation um, so that's not an upgrade or anything that just it, like if if, if these cards had genetics and or revelation on it, those would happen. So they don't happen. But now we draw some new cards for that. And if one of them or more of them is an edge, that's a problem for us. Because um, that means that bad things can happen. So flip that over. 
flip that over and we're good okay so um, that's fine that's the competition's move um, check for contracts nothing has changed obviously at this stage so now it's our turn so um, so hey, as you notice uh, you may notice the numbers if you can see them on the board are quite a bit higher uh, now uh, because obviously things are harder to get to they're harder to build on they're more challenging environments and so on um, so we're looking at B3s for the asteroid belt to build on uh, we're looking at B5s and 4s for the Jovian system B5s for the, the uh, Saturnian system uh, B7s to build in uh, Uranian system B10 for Neptunian and B12 for Pluto um, which uh, is quite a bit um, and also to get out there is going to require a lot more moves um, so we're probably going to just sort of concentrate on the inner system a bit maybe or the inner part of the board at first and then we'll we'll see what we can do uh, so I have these two cards that I showed earlier um, I think I'm going to just do some research and get some more cards so that means I just get two more cards from the deck if I want that um, hmm. that's an interesting one to, to get so I can actually draw from the deck or the offers um, this one's good because it gives me a shielded move right away um, so this is what the shielded move looks like uh, on the side there it says shielded I don't know if you can see that um, so if I take this card and play it on my uh, HQ if I upgrade that next turn it means that I always have a component of my move that is shielded if I choose to use that. So I think I'm going to take that and I'm going to draw a card. Um, and that's a good one. That's got a build two and a, a shielded build one. So that's great, right? That is a really good uh, set of uh, things to, to get. Now, uh, because I have four or less cards, I actually draw another card. Um, but let me just check uh, on the sequence of events here because uh, we replenish offers first so I'm going to draw that to replace this and then I'm going to draw a card because I have four cards and that is a move four again so that's not a bad hand at the moment and that's me done so competition turn uh, two discoveries and contract six. Whoa, that's a that's a doozy. Um, right. So, what does that mean? That means lots of stuff happens. Um, so, da -da -da. so there isn't a site occupied by a competition team at the moment. Um, so basically, they don't get any. Uh, of the discovery so if they were at a site that had a, 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 a space for a discovery tile um, they would have got be able to draw the discovery for that flip it over and get that result and they'd be able to do it twice they're not out on the board though so um, that's good uh, so that means they don't get those but they do get the contract six so that means we put a cube on contract number six which is non-start planeteer cards in three infra slots um, so if they get another one of those they will get that contract so um, that's a nice easy one for human players to get um, because all it means is you just have to upgrade um, uh, or you can basically replace the cards that you already have hopefully in your uh, HQ with non-start planeteer ones so from this era so the unfortunate thing about that is that all of these ones at the moment because they've got this dark border on them are um, actually start cards so I won't be able to get that just from slapping all these down um, all right that's good they're done um, I think I am going to uh, however put one of these down um, I'm going to replace my reusable solid nuclear drive from the uh, Mariners era here uh, with that 
um because now that gives me the move three i had before and the move or, or the more the uh, the move two option now which is shielded um so i can always upgrade that later on as well so that previous card from the previous era that goes out of play now um and uh you know isn't it's no longer there it's not used anymore um so that was my action um i'm down to four cards again i'm going to play or draw another card um and it's still a start card but it's a move four or it's floor one so that's quite nice um over to the competition uh, wow, it really likes the offers things. Um, offers 2, 3, and also the uh, genetics or revelation thing, but none of them are that. So offers 2 and 3 go away. Um, and we draw 2 more. Uh, right, now we're getting into the good stuff. So it's explore 2 or build 3. So that's a really good uh, like upgrade for one of these, basically. Uh, and, oh, here's a good one. Build four or produce one. Um, so now we're getting into the good stuff. These are not the start cards. These are the ones that are you know, in the main deck. So um, to remind you, if this deck um, runs out, then uh, that's my deck. If this, if this deck runs out, it triggers the end of the turn or end of the uh, era. Um, if six out of the seven uh contracts over there for the planeteers era get uh, fulfilled then that also triggers the end of the era um i presume if this deck finishes then that's also end of era um i would imagine either draw pile has been emptied yeah so that's unlikely though because this deck is is very big um all right they're done back to me um, so I could continue my upgrading, uh, although to be honest, I would like to do some research and get that at least, that, um, double, you know, explore two, build three one, that's quite nice, um, and then I could do that as well, so... Yeah, I'm going to do uh, some more research. So I have less than five cards in my hand. I'm going to research this. Um, the build four is awfully tempting. Um, but I'm going to do one from the deck. Oh, here we go. So this, uh, this is your first look at a revelation card. So produce two or revelation one. So usually the revelations and the genetics, they're, uh, they're not awfully common. Uh, they're usually coupled with something rather good, like produce two or research two or something like that. Uh, so this is this is a big uh, a big thing. Um, produce two means that uh, if I use that action, I can uh, produce from two tiles that I have. I think I have to have a base on them, um, but I don't necessarily need to have a team on them. Uh, but I've got one base left over from uh, before, from the Mariners era down here. Uh, that's a P1 uh, refinery. So that would get me two points. Uh, and if I built a refinery on this guy, that would get me three points. Um, so I could get potentially five points from that. Or I could increase my revelation by one, which would just move this cube around one spot. Uh, but that gets it closer to to looping all the way around um so uh yeah that's an interesting decision there or i can hold on to it and hope i get some more revelations later on but i've got this card now uh this gets replenished uh move five or build three that's not bad uh and that is it so competition turn my god they're really going hardcore for these offers Offers one and four. Um, also a uh, uh, era thing. So this also kicks in. So that's not relevant though. Um, we're really tearing through this. Uh, so move four, explore two, may upgrade as uh, infra. That's quite uh, that's quite a good one. Um, also tempting to grab. Uh, and 
Uh oh. Right, now we're in trouble. Poach. Um, we have an edge here. So an edge, when it's played, when the competition is replenishing their offers, as they are now, that kicks in. But it's not what it says there. It's a special effect for the solo game. So let's have a look at what that is. Poach is probably bad. Um, all right. If played by the competition during an offers action, uh, if revealed during the competition offers action, poach, choose and discard half the cards in your hand, rounding down. Oh, that's a bugger. Um, well, hmm. Well, I suppose it clears out some of these. I definitely want to keep that. Definitely want to keep that. Definitely want to keep that. And I've got what um, seven cards. So half of that is three and a half rounded down. So I have to choose and discard half the cards in your hand rounding down. So three cards. I have to get rid of three cards. So I want to keep that. Probably just get rid of these start ones, to be honest. Um, that will that will work. So I get rid of these, which you know, is a little unfortunate. But I, I'm, I'm left with these, which are quite nice. Um, the edge goes away, I believe. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, gets discarded. Um, sorry, da, 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 da. check the rules. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, discard, yeah. So I discard that and draw another one and pray they don't have an edge. They don't. Right, so this is a Research 2 and Explore 2 card. So now we've cleared out. I, mean, I wonder if they put a lot of offers on those just to clear out the start thing. Start cards from there might be why they did that. Um, right. Uh, let me just think a bit. Um, sorry, I'm just going to move. See if I can move this a little that way. And then all that way and then we can see see all the board there there we go and i'll move this over a bit here like that and you can see that right there we go uh right so my turn hmm interesting so we're still nothing much is happening on the board with i'm still just trying to beef my uh abilities up here basically uh, I've got that one because really what I want to do is I want to upgrade this and I want to upgrade this because that's going to give me lots of builds going to give me a shielded build to use I've got the shielded move to use um, that will be quite nice um, also though I do want to kind of actually get going and head out into the into the solar system and explore stuff um, but first uh, I think let's get the shielded build down so I'm going to replace this guy so this is an old era again uh, I'm going to get rid of that uh, down to three cards draw one oh produce and the genetics now that is really good because I have genetics on the second spot of the track down here uh, so if I play this, that moves up around to uh, the first spot again, which means it, I can pick one of those cards. Um, uh, that would be really quite nice. Um, yeah, well, we'll get to that when we get to that, basically. But um, that was me, basically. So um, competition time, Hygieia. Right, we haven't got an offer space for once. But Hygieia is uh, an asteroid in the asteroid belt down here. There's nobody on it. That means they put their one of their dudes on the uh, site. And um, if we draw that again, it means they'll be able to explore it. And if we draw it after that, they'll be able to stick a base on it as well. So that's interesting. I, I still have a chance I can move up there and then build if assuming they don't do it first but I have no idea if they're going to do that first um, 
Right, well we've got the move the move and the build shielded, so that's nice. Uh explore doesn't need shielding. Um do I want to get this now? I think I am. I'm gonna play my genetics card. So I'm gonna play this for genetics one. Um, that means my genetics goes up by one around here, so that's back on the top spot. So you see there's uh, three, three places here. Um, it's back at the top. Once it's done a full circle, because uh, I got those two uh, in the previous era, um, I can pick a card. And I think at this point, I'm going to pick the move one. So this is the low body mass card. Uh, your move actions gain five move. So I, it's like I have it in the HQ, but um, I don't. It's, uh, um, it's kind of external to that. So that's important for a few things, uh, that fact. Uh, it also, it's got one T on it. That means I get one money for picking this one. So there we go. End of the round. I'm down to lesson three. Oh, that's a good one. Move six. May upgrade as infra. That's rather tasty. Um, hmm, keep hold of that one. Right. Uh, the um, competition now. Ah, they're back to the offers again. Offers one, two. That's these two. Oh, that's that's that's, uh, that's a shame. Let's got rid of uh, this one. The move four, explore two, upgrade. Um, so that goes away, and we draw a card. Whoops. Um, oh, move eight, explore three. That's nice. And then the one that we accidentally drew, move four, explore two. So that's back. Um, nothing horrible happening there. Excellent stuff. Um, just realise this is going to get this is going to get interesting in terms of um, if I amass a lot of these progress cards because uh, I've got very little room to put them. Um, right, again, so I haven't really moved out into the solar system yet, uh, but now I've got move five and I've got a move a shielded move two. Um, so what can we do? We've got uh, I guess actually. Um, See if I can get a pointer here. I have a pen and laying around at some point. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, just uh, make sure this is good. Do do do. Yeah. Everything is still fully functional. Right. Um. So. Uh. Where were we? Um. Yeah. I can move theoretically now. Now I've got, just from here, without spending any cards, I've got a move of, I've got a shielded move of seven, or a, um, uh, an unsh unshielded move of eight, five plus three. Uh, let me just double check the shield factory uh, things. Uh, yeah, so the active player may choose to have a move action originating from this region be shielded from radiation. Um, so, uh, all my bases in the inner solar system, uh, that you probably can't see that, uh, that says shield factory on it. Um, so anything starting from here is as if it launched from a shield factory. So that is... Um, that means anything originating from there can be shielded. So I can come out from here to um, basically anywhere on, on the uh, Galilean satellites out here. Um, so from here, you see it's got a little table here. Distance from inner solar system. Europa is five, Ga uh, Callisto, Ganymede, Io is six. Um, and that's because they have uh, gravity. So just to show you how that works, um, I think it would work is that you enter the region and then it's one, so it's one, two, three, four, and then 
five to land on Europa, or five six to land on Callisto, Io, or Ganymede because gravity adds one. Um, so yeah, you have to launch from here. That's one, and then you add up the diamonds and the uh, interregion spots, and then you spend one to land on the moon. And if it has gravity, you plus one because that's that's what gravity does. So potentially, I could head out to the Jovian system out here. Um, I could not launch from there because I don't have a base there yet, so I can't move from that. Uh, the only place I could go from here is actually back to my existing base down there. So I quite like that idea. Um, but I don't even need to spend a card. So I'm going to send this dude, uh, this team, out to Ganymede because I have a moral obligation um, since my uh, uh, username here is Evil Dr. Ganymede. Um, so I have a moral obligation to claim Ganymede before anyone else can get their mitts on it. So I'm going to land on Ganymede. Uh, that's a six move, uh, but I've got five plus a shielded, well, it's shielded anyway from the... Um, shield factory but i've got seven or eight move anyway so that's all fine um and that's all i'm gonna do so uh, i've still got less than four or four or less cards i'm gonna draw a card research two or explore two so that's quite nice um all right that's me done uh do competition oh you arse. Well, that's an interesting one. Ganymede. Like, the competition has spotted me, apparently, heading off to uh, a certain very large moon of Jupiter and gone, hey, I want some of that action too. So, uh, now I believe they have to have a team there uh, to get anything else there. So, yeah. Right, the pressure is on now because that means I have to... I have to get cracking on that one, otherwise he might, well, they might build, uh, or they might explore or build there, I don't know what card they're going to draw next, um, it's really hard to predict it, uh, which makes this quite interesting, damn it, I don't want them getting Ganymede, that's mine, huh, um, so, Here's the thing. If I explore Ganymede, I get the E3 tile. And I get to claim the E3 tile. If they if their next card, the competition's next card, is also Ganymede, which is unlikely, but conceivable, possibly. I don't actually know what's on, on all these cards. Um, then if I have explored and revealed the tile, they'll just stick a base on it. And that kicks me off basically um so i'm gonna take that risk uh, i don't think they're going to um draw ganymede again that quickly so but to do that i need to blow a card i've already got explore one i need explore three for this one and unfortunately i just drew one so explore two plus explore one that's explore three uh, exploration does not have to be shielded at all, so that's good. Um, and that will let me draw an E3 tile, which I'm going to do right now. So this is E3. It is... Uh, it's not a great one. Um, abundant ores and water. Uh, it's a. It does get me one money. So that's nice. Go up one point. Uh... It's a P2, so that's good for if I build a refinery there. Um, and it's base minus 2, which means instead of a B5, I actually need a B3, which is good, because I've already got that. Um, well, I've already got a shielded base 1, a shielded build 1. I've, I've got a build 1 here. Um, and I don't know if I have... I've got a build 3 thing here that I can use 
might have to just mm, either blow this one and use it to build the base straight away or I can take the risk and upgrade and then you know upgrade um, this you know, basically put it on this slot and then I'll have a shielded build of four that I can then use the next turn and just hope and pray that they don't get a Ganymede card oh damn damn you competition that's that's a pain in the butt um okay uh so uh, i think that's the end of my turn uh i don't believe i have drawn a card yet so i'm going to do that because i've got four or less cards uh we got another move three shielded move two uh right uh, you're not seeing me wince here so this is an edge it doesn't matter though because it's uh, they only count when they're drawn when uh, the offers are replenished so this doesn't matter uh, Oberon Titania well they're getting around uh, so they put it on the first one basically uh, Oberon or Titania so they've got a team out on Uranus uh, on uh, Uranus' moons already, which is ridiculous. This is... This is the interesting thing, because the competition kind of breaks the rules, uh, because they can, you know, I could draw one that says Pluto, then it's really unlikely that anybody, any human player at this point in the game would have enough move to get out to Pluto, because... Um, it's basically uh, to get to Pluto from the inner system is 23 move. Um, and that is because you are uh, taking off, going, uh, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, um, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then you have to add the transit edition here from Saturn's moons, which is Pluto Caron is six, so that's 10, 16. Uh, I think, no, uh, no, 10 plus 16. Yeah, this is where it gets confusing. Um, transit editions always confuse me. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If it was just adding these, it would be another eighteen, right? Because that's six, six, and six. No, six. No, no lies. It's another twelve. Um, because I need to go up to here. So that would be. Um, yeah, no, that's right. So start again. If they were to leave here, it would be one to take off, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sixteen, twenty-two, and then one to land, which is twenty-three. That's how that works. Um, the transit editions only matter if you are launching from these spots. So if you were launched from Saturn's moons, if you started off, let's say on Rhea, you would take off You'd add six, then add four, um, and then I think you just, I don't think you keep adding. No, that's ridiculous. Uh, you know, you don't keep adding, you just add add the diamond uh, things. So it would be from here, you'd go one to take off, six, so that's seven, uh, 11, and then plus 12, so that's 23, and then one more is 24. So it actually costs you 24 to go from Saturn to Pluto, and it costs you 23 to go from um, uh, the inner solar system. Um, presumably that is because you can basically use Jupiter as a slingshot or whatever. Uh, you don't have to use as much fuel and so on. Um, but anyway, I that was my turn. Um... They put uh, Oberon down, didn't they? So that's their turn. Now it's back to me, right? I believe. Um, God, watch, I don't get so distracted that I forget where I am. 
Uh, right, where are we at? Um, so, trick now is do I want to take the risk of building or do I want to, or upgrading, I mean, or do I want to just go ahead and build? I think I'm going to be okay. It's going to bite me in the ass, I know it, but um, I am going to replace this with the uh, explore two or build three upgrade uh which that goes away now uh i'm down to four cards i'm going to draw another one that's a build three as so that this card build three or build two may upgrade that's actually a better version of this one and it's also not a start card so that's that's better in terms of getting that contract um right yeah um Aerial Titania, again, out in the Uranus system. Damn it. They're starting to take over the place here. All right, I am now, uh, so that's competition. I am now going to build uh, a base. Uh, it's going to be a build three, because it's build five minus two. I've got a shielded build one, and I've got a build three that adds up to a basically a shielded build four. Uh, what can I build there? I can build, um, let's go down the list. Uh, I can't build an attraction because it's, uh, not an actual wonder or an alien artifact. Uh, we are going to get alien artifacts later on, spoilers. Um, can't build a bio lab because there's no life. Uh, that's what that little green symbol is, if you can see that. Um, there we go. Uh, uh, could theoretically build an exploiter, but I don't want to. Uh, now, industrial, it has a water or a P number, and it's got both. I could build an industrial. That doubles the total build value when performing a build action elsewhere in this region. So that could make building here a lot easier. That's quite a good one. Um... Build a refinery, it's got a P2. Could do research, because that's buildable anywhere. Secure is buildable anywhere. Shield factory requires water as well. Um, now I'm already, I've already got shielded moves, so um, that isn't as essential at the moment. Uh, and I can't build a spaceport because uh, in the uh, Planeteers era, which is the Saturn symbol here, the site has to have no gravity penalty. So the only place in the uh, Jovian system that doesn't have a gravity penalty is Europa. So that makes that quite a nice spot um, for that, at least. Uh, and now, like last uh, era, all the spaceport did was add two to my move. This era, and the Staff Era's era, I can double the value of any one move card played or any one move infra card used if all the moving teams begin at a spaceport. So that's really big, um, potentially. Like, that can that could get me quite a bit further than just an extra two. Um, huh. I think I'm going to build an industrial there because if I do that because I want to try and build uh, I want to try and take over the the whole uh, uh, Jupiter system here because there's a lot of E3s in there and that's quite nice uh, and the, the industrial will will halve my move by uh, build costs basically in that region so anything in this area uh, is going to be cheaper for me which is nice uh, so I am going to build that once I build that this guy gets booted back to his box uh, it's a competition so we're done uh, I have five cards now so I don't draw one more over to the competition um, ooh uh, ALB and offers one four and it's got a special and an edge symbol on it. Uh, what the heck is ALB? Um, 
Duh, duh, duh. What is that? ALB. Uh, L. What could LB be? Um, is that a place? Maybe it's a place. Um, hmm. Uh, but there, hang on a sec, that's a weird one. Sorry, just looking it up here. I don't know what that means. What on earth does that mean? A, like, the, again, LB is not a place. But it's a really offers thing. that one up one second I think I've seen that before I was like completely blanked on what that means um, da, da, da. Da, da, da. A slash LB. That's a mystery. A L B and offers one four. I'm sure I've seen a question about that one. Skip that one because I don't know what that actually means. Um, I think we're going to have to just skip that because I have no idea what that means. Uh, there's no nothing, um, nothing anywhere that explains that, which is weird. Uh, Sites. No, oh, no, I'm going to have to give up on that one. Um, we'll ignore that. Um, and we'll draw another one. Dione. Um, yeah, sorry about that. That was uh, that's very bizarre. I'll have to ask about that one. I'm sure I've seen that asked before somewhere, but I couldn't find it right now. Um, There's not anything written on here, is there? No. Okay, well, Dione, they get a base on Dione. Or they get a team on Dione. There we go. Right, that's them. Sorry, just getting confused. Right. So I am out on Ganymede. I think I would like to... And I can build a base on the series and get a refinery there. That'd be quite nice. Uh, I would kind of like to grab those other E3s though. So I'm going to use my move, uh, just my inherent move. Uh, I've got my shielded move two and I've got my move five. 
Um, so I've got a shielded move of seven, which basically means I can all I need to do to get to another one of these moons is just take off and land. So that's a move two. It's shielded, so I don't need to care about radiation. Um, incidentally, the competition doesn't need to care about radiation either, because they're the competition. Um, if they were a human player, they would, though. Uh, I'm going to go and land on Europa. And that's me. So again, I don't draw any cards, because I have four already, at least. Right. Right, here's another bonkers one. Caron! So, despite it being relatively early in the game, the competition are all the way out there now. So, uh, I need to I need to get going here. So, going to start on uh, on on getting my guys out there. Um, right. So they're out on Caron. Uh, what am I going to do? Uh, move six there. Not move that. I mean, I could if I actually did two upgrade actions. Uh, I could sorry take the move six and the build three or shielded build two and just replace this one and possibly well mm, I could replace that one but then I'll lose the shielded one. Uh, um, this is the same as that, but it's not a start card. Which means that if I just replaced that one with this one, that counts as not start anymore. So if I actually uh, upgrade these two, I would be able to get that uh, contract that is the three non-start cards. That's interesting. But um, what can I do here? Have I got Explore 3? I've got Explore 2 and I've got an Explore 1 here. So I'm going to play the Explore 1. Uh, and I'm going to explore um, Europa. So I draw another E3, and it is... Uh, I want it to be life, because uh, if it's life, I can build a bio lab, and that gives me an extra genetics. Um, but it is Abundant Ores and a Natural Wonder. Uh, but that gives me two money, which is nice, because that puts me up over here. Uh, I am ahead. And it's also, uh, because it's uh, Abundant Ores, it's base minus three. So my, I only require a build of two to build there. Um, now the thing is, yeah, that's fine. Because I've got a shielded build of one. I've got a, a normal build of three. So I can just add up to a total build four anyway. So I could, uh, I could build that. Right, I put my guy on top of there and I claim that. Uh, I'm now down to four cards. I can draw a card. Uh, ooh. Yeah. So this is cool uh, because it's a special action here. Build five or relocate one of your teams currently at the inner solar system to any site. So if I still had a guy down here, uh, I could literally just go, I'm just going to stick you on Pluto, wham, and that's it. You know, that's all I need to do. Um, I did see a little note about that somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's not a standard move action and uh, requires no card play or improve, so that's quite nice. Um, right, neat. Okay, competition turn. Offers one, two, four, and it's planet symbol. Right, so again, this is, is looking for these genetics ones, which it doesn't have. So one, two, and four go away. And then we might have the peril of edges. Uh, that's not an edge. That's not an edge. Oh crap, that is an edge. Oh, it's a sabotage. Oh my God, I hate sabotage. No, no. Oh, sabotage is awful. Oh, because I think it kicks me out of a site. Arse. Yeah, choose one of your teams at a site without a base, if any, relocate it to a site with one of your bases. Well, bums. Um. Uh, well, that's not 
horrible. I'm gonna move this guy out over to the uh, industrial place. Or, here's a thing. These count as bases. Hmm. Very interesting. So, are you pondering or I'm pondering here? So, with this antimatter prototype, any one of your teams currently at the inner solar system can be located to any site. So, if I just kick him out to back here, I can play this card and then just put him anywhere. Which may be better. Um, and it will be shielded because it's launching from the inner, inner solar system. So, that's intriguing. I could theoretically build him, uh, uh, just fling him out to Pluto. Um, bang. Or even Charon. That'd be hilarious. Because um, then I could build there and kick him off. But although it's a build, I would need build 12, which is quite a lot. Um, hmm. But let's do that. Um, so that's that. And then, oh, produce two, Revelation one. We've got three producers out on the offers. That's quite neat. Okay. Now, do I want to just fling them out straight away, or do I want to just build a base there on the Europa? I think I'm okay because he, the competition does not... Yeah, the competition team isn't present there. So, um, I don't have to build a, ba a, a base there right now. Um, I could, though. Mm, what do I want to do? Do I want to fling the inner solar system team out to Pluto? Seems a bit premature at the moment, because I need... I mean, ironically, this has got build 5 on it, so that would be really handy for that. But I would need more. Um, I mean, if I did this, I'd have a build of, a shielded build of 5, straight up. I'm going to actually just sit here and upgrade this, so I'm going to get rid of this one. Now, this is the same era. Uh, this is the Planeteers era, so I, that means instead of throwing it away like the Mariners era, infra cards i actually put this back in my hand and i just replace it with this so because it's still the current era so that's my action um uh we're not anywhere near any of the things here yet are we on the contracts no um right um let's go back to competitions uh oh oberon umbriel uh now they have a dude on Oberon. Uh, so competition team is present. It has an empty explore box. Um, oh, whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa. Hold the, hold the fort here. Really? Wow. Huh. So site with empty explore box. So if they weren't present, so it means like, you know, if I place, when I place these guys, you just place a competition team. If none are available, instead draw and place tile. Fine. With this one, it, because they are present, draw and place a discovery tile, awarding any money to the competition. Then remove the team and place a competition base. So... That's interesting. So I thought it just meant you just reveal the tile and that was it. But no, you, they actually place a base there. Damn. So it's not a two-stage thing. And if it had a, a discovery tile that's bows already, they would just put a base there. So, wow. Um, that's a biggie then. Okay, so E2. Um, pick, a, pick a thing here. We have exotic elements and natural wonder. Ugh. Three money and P zero. 
So that just means you can use it to produce if you put a refinery on it, basically, and then add one. They got three money. One, two, one, two, three. They're ahead of me again. Um, and they get a base. So... Oop, clang. Sorry. Um, I shuffle these up. Draw one of them. It's a research that is an eligible base um, for that site. So let's see what research does. Uh, if you have more prof profit than the competition, so like me, the player, it gains one money. Well, I don't because you just overtook me. So nothing happens there. So that's what it says here. So if it if it the base that's placed if it's something that is legal to place there because it's just drawn randomly from the uh, the mug um, then it will um, uh, you know this effect will kick in if it's not something that's legal like say you put a shield factory down and, and it's on a place that doesn't have water then this effect doesn't happen so they've got a base there so they've got one base. Well, bases in three regions beyond Jupiter. So they got one base in one region beyond Jupiter. They could potentially, if they get Dione and Charon, they they will have three bases beyond Jupiter. They can get that contract over there, like this one. And if they get this, because they weren't claimed in the previous era, they're actually going to get the money for this and this. So that's five money. So that's quite a lot. Um, right. That's a pain in the butt all right pressure's on here i gotta get going here um all right building let's uh let's hold this guy the antimatter prototype back here let's let's hold him and hold him in reserve um now actually just remember i've got my industrial base there right so that halves my build cost or it'll be doubles the build points i spend right um so that means I theoretically have a build of 10 <laughs> right now. Doesn't halve the build cost, it doubles this. So, I mean, that's ridiculous. That'd be, that'd be awesome, kind of out here or something. Um, or even out here. Uh, but I'm not sure how likely it is to get a tile with water on it to be able to build an industrial out on out Pluto and Charon. But... But anyway, be that as it may, it means I can not spend a card and build a base on Europa, which would be nice. Um, I'm going to build a spaceport on Europa. That is a good place to put it, because uh, it's the only place in the Jovian system where I can build a spaceport, because it needs to be a place that has a no gravity modifier. And Callisto, Io, and Ganymede all have gravity. So, um, right, I've got five cards. Uh, I'm good. Uh, that also was a shielded action because it's uh, I've got the shielded uh, build from my infra. All right, competition. Oh, bugger it. So, competition has got Dione. They already have a base on Dione, or they already have a team on Dione, so that means, as we discovered with Oberon, I, I think I was prophesying here, because the next card they're going to draw is going to be Caron, isn't it? Um, it should be really unlikely, but it would be hilarious if it was. Uh, right, so they draw an E2 tile, and, ah, oh, the buggers. Uh, they got the Exo Microbes one, so that is too money for them. Uh, one, two, uh, and genetics one. I don't believe that the competition actually gets anything for those. Um, let me just double check. Ba 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 ba. ba. Uh, bah, bah. Sorry, just looking up the rules. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I don't think it actually affects them. So they don't get that genetics bonus, which is really annoying. So yeah, some of the tiles actually have genetics one or revelations one or something like that written on them already. Um, which means if you draw them, you just increase, you know, just move these around as appropriate on the wheel, which can be quite nice. Um, and that one, the microbes one, especially, let's, uh, that's the only place you can build a bio lab, which means that uh, when you build that, you can advance your genetics by one again. So that's quite nice. And I would really like to do that. Um, I'd really like to get another round on the genetics then, because if I do, because I have an adaptation already, it means I can get this radiation resistant one, which means I can just ignore this shielding and stuff. Um, so that's going to be important later on as well, because all of the staff areas board, every single space on it counts as irradiated. Um, and it costs three money to do anything there if you don't have the shielding or the resistance to radiation so it's even worse so it's a really good idea to get radiation resistant in this era preferably sooner rather than later um right i so they just did that bugger so eh. Eh, 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 eh. Do I hop over over there or do I send you out to Pluto? Um, I'm going to send, I'm going to do this. I'm going to send um, Team B, oops, sorry, that's the wrong deck. Uh, send Team B out to Pluto. Fling! So they use an antimatter prototype to just, um, uh, if you see the, the picture on there, uh, spaceship with a big honking engine. Um, so uh, they're just going to fling themselves out into the uh, outermost reaches of the solar system there. Uh, and we'll see what comes of them. <laughs> uh, right, I have four cards now. I can draw a card. Ooh, now this is good. Intercept. Um, now, oh, hang on. This, uh, I believe, this changes as well. Uh, solo edge table. If played by you, intercept. Play it at the start of your turn. Take another turn after this one. So yeah, play it at the beginning of your turn. Take two turns in a row. So it's the same, same effect. That's handy. So that could that can get me uh, a double a double thing. Like I can do a move and an explore, or or an explore and a build straight away. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, right, competition. Damn, offers again. I'd really like to do this. Um, offers one, two, three. So that goes, that goes, and that goes. Ouch. Uh, we're also tearing through this deck, um, which is a little worrying. So nothing there. Damn it. Edge. Market influence. That means... Of course it means. Competition gets two money. Bang. Bap, bap. Straight away they get two money. This goes away. Keep drawing. And that's it. Yikes. They're uh, getting a bit of a lead. Uh, huh. They're also in a pretty good position around here as well. I need to start doing stuff. Uh, I'm going to use my, um, I got a total build of five here so far. I'm going to use my explore two infra. I'm going to explore out on Pluto. Eh, ooh. Water. Actually, that's not bad. Water. One money, uh, and a base minus three. So that's actually knocked that down to a base nine. So I've got a build of five. I've got six, seven. But, you know, that's a bit more within reach than 12. 
Because then if I could build a, well, like another industrial layer or something, um, Yeah. If I can build uh, an industrial layer, then that means I would totally be able to, or much more easily be able to build on Taron if I decided to pop over there and gazump that one. Um, uh, if you are my generation uh, from England, um, I, you'll know what gazump means. Uh, but I think it was a, uh, I think it was back in the 80s or something, people used to basically claim jump on houses, like, uh, as far as I understood it, it was like you, you put an offer down on a house and then someone else would come along and go, oh, put down a higher offer and they kick you out of it. And that was called gazumping, if I recall correctly. So, I've used it for this game to mean, like, if I can just sort of, get in there before they build a base or if they uh, do the same to me then that's gazumping um, don't know if that's completely accurate or not but that's what I'm sticking with so <laughs> uh, right so I am out there now um, and I've got five cards so competition oh Hygieia Hygieia slash Enceladus uh, so they are on Hygieia, so that means they get an E1. It's a natural wonder. Oh, it gives them two more money again. Bloody hell. Ah, tear your head. Um, and, uh, oh, um, sorry. They were already at uh, Dione, right? Um, so not only do they draw this, but they also... Um, remove the team and place a base. So I've got to draw a base there and I've also got to draw a base here. <coughs> so that could be really annoying. And that is an exploiter up here. So this, I, this is the thing I should have done when I flipped this tile. Um, exploiter is not a valid Thing because this does not have a p value on it um, so the interesting thing is that tile up here up here that had a p0 that would be a valid one because it has a p value on it it's just zero this doesn't have a p anything so this doesn't so that's not a valid one that's fine draw one from here it's an industrial um, does it have a p-value or water on it? It does not. So it is not a valid base. So nothing nothing happens on the um, table. So right. Now they're good. Now. Uh, have they got any uh, things here? They've got one, two, three bases. They're not in one region though. They're not all beyond Uranus. They're not all beyond Jupiter. Da, da, da. So no, no contracts yet. But they're, they're getting busy out there. Um, I'm just too busy researching and stuff, apparently. Um, now, I could... Having said that... I still need a lot more to build an industrial out there though, right? So, for now, what I'm going to do is get some points. I'm going to replace this. I'm going to put this back. So, it's basically, just, it's the same card. I'm going to put this back in. But because this is a start one and this is a non-start one, I can put that there. And now I have three non-start um, Planeteer cards in my three infra slots, which means... I kick him off here and I get the reward for that. So that is a two money reward, which means I creep up one, two over there. Just make sure you can see that. Yep. Um, so he goes back to his base uh, or his box, and uh, that's me. That's my action. Right. 
Um, competition turn. Hygieia. All right, so Hygieia slash Vesta. So Hygieia, they've already got uh, everything on there. Um, the drawing one. Conduct a site action at the listed site that contains a competition team. Well, Hygieia contains our competition team. Or at the first site listed if both have competition teams. If neither site has a competition team, conduct the site action at the site without a base, or at the first act listed site if both are without a base. If both sites have bases, discard this card and draw another one. So what? Yeah, that's... <laughs> hang on. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit of a mess. It just says, on the summary, it says, perform at the site with the competition team. First listed site if both have teams. Well, one of them doesn't have anything. So that's, this is Vesta down here. Um, uh, buh, 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 buh. If no teams, perform at the site without a base. Well, there's one team so what does this actually mean um, it's like uh, we don't want to do the contains a competition team or at the first site listed I mean, it says if both sites have bases, discard this card and draw another one. So they don't both have bases. But this is the way it's phrased. It's talking about if neither site has one or if both sites has bases. But it doesn't say anything about if one site has bases. So I think what it means is like this one's got a base on it. So it's going to happen at the other site, right? But it's just phrased really weirdly, I think, there. So... Um, I'm just going to stick him on Vesta and we'll say that's what that's how that works because that seems to be how that works um, well that seems to be the intent of how that should work anyway um, right so they're done um, I am now going to do something um, what am I going to do I think I am going to hop over to Callisto from there. Um, wait a minute, am I going to do that? Because that's a spaceport. I mean, I'm kind of wasting that. But I've kind of committed my other guy out there, haven't I? So no, I, I'm going to do that. Um, so it costs like three move, one to take off and then two to land on Callisto. I have, um, actually, you know what? Wait a minute. I have two move. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I have two move that's shielded. Um gonna cost me three move isn't it uh, uh, I just wonder if I made a, a mistake earlier on then because I probably just moved from here to here assuming I had enough um, moves to do that and I didn't spend the card whereas I uh, I probably was one short because it'd be two to take off from Ganymede, one to land on Europa, which would make it an unshielded move. I have to look at the video afterwards um, and then I will adjust accordingly. Because um, if it was unshielded, then I'd, I'll have to um, knock two off my score, but I won't do that now. I'll look at it later. All right, I'll use this then. Um, so it's basically a two plus a two. 
Um, oh, actually, no, you know what? Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm on a spaceport. That doubles the value of any one move card played or any one move infra card. So I'm just going to double that value. So screw you, game. <laughs> I'm, uh, I actually can do that legitimately, at least from there. But I'll check this move uh, afterwards. But yeah, I've effect effectively, I've got a shielded move of four. So I can totally do that. Um, so I'm hopping over there. And that is me. Competition. Triton. Oh my god. You're getting everywhere. Good god. Bang. <laughs> uh, I got a... I'm kind of concentrating on this region and faffing around over there and faffing around down here and I'm, I'm kind of getting left behind which is a bit uh, a bit annoying um, I thought I'd have more time but maybe not uh, and now I need an exp oh god I need an explore don't I damn it why did I do that um, right well I'm going to do some research uh, I'm just going to draw two cards. Move, oh, shielded move four or shielded build two. That's not bad. And the build four will produce one. Well, none of those are in explore. I think I just might have screwed myself. <laughs> and I need explore three. Uh, and there ain't any out here. And I don't have any in my hand. And I've got one, two, three. I've got seven cards right now, so I can do one more research action. Um, that said, I now have enough to build stuff, don't I? Because I've got build five, I've got another four here, so that's build nine, right? I could build out there next turn. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Uh, so that's not useless. But let's see what competition does. Interamnia, they are now starting to spread out into the asteroid belt here. Um, that could be dangerous. So they put a team on Interamnia, which is this asteroid down here. Uh, right, I'm going to build. Um, I'm going to build. Uh, so I'm going to use my build four here. I should probably... Build five, that's build two, that's build two as well. I'm just thinking, like, shouldn't I keep the company produce and then I can possibly do a refinery somewhere? Hmm. Nah. Well, for now, I can actually take these and, uh, sorry, not these. Uh, what are we doing? Nah, hang on. Yes, these ones. Um, so that's build four in total. Okay, just from here. And then add that to the build five. That gives me build nine. A 9 is enough to build up here because it's B12 minus 3. So I'm going to use these cards and it just gives me less cards to deal with here. Um, so that will be uh, build 9. So I can build either a shield generator, or a shield factory, or an industrial area. Again. And I think I wanted to do an industrial because that gets me the doubling my build score thing which means if I hop over to Caron I will be able to build a base there unless he builds one first which we'll have to see if that happens um, right I'm done competition Enceladus damn you getting everywhere I need to I need to watch it now. They they've spread out quite a lot, and I am not very spread out. Um, poof. Now if I if I can get that base on Carl and I can get the two bases beyond Uranus bonus up here. Um, 
And then if I was to build one more base, I would get, th like, out here, like, maybe on Triton or on Titania or something. No, Triton I'd have to build. Um, that is three regions, oh, no, no, three regions beyond Jupiter, so I can, I can do Titania or something as well. Um, I could get that one. That would be nice. Uh, hmm. Intriguing. Um... Right, damn it, whose turn was it? Uh, he just played Enceladus, right, I think? Yeah, because I built and then he just played that, so he's out on Enceladus. Uh, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Hmm. I'm holding on to this revelation thing, because I haven't seen that many others. There is one there. That gave me up to two. Really need a third one though. Um, I still need, I do still need an explore. Let's do a research because I have five cards and I'm going to actually draw, take that one. I'm going to take one from here and, ooh, it's a genetics. That's not awful, but it's not an explore. So that's, that is awful. Uh, ah, here's an explore. Um, so I can possibly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could grab that next turn, and that will give me a way out down here. Yes. Um, right, competition. A slash E E and offers two four. Good God, it's another one of those things. What is that? Um, right, I'm going to have another attempt to try and find out what that means. A slash E E. What could E E? Oh. 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 They're the cards. That's what they are. Well, okay. Hang on. Because previously they got they got another one, didn't they? Um. Where does it describe what that? means okay it doesn't actually describe what it means hang on let me let me have a look here being blind because if you look at a symbol of a current era and send the actions blah 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 replenish okay contract step no discovery step no no I think site action, no, site situation, no, competition base placement, no, wait a minute, maybe I've got to look in a separate bit here, uh, oh wait, hang on, it's probably in the planetary is extra rules, isn't it, ah, here it is, competition progress action, I see, Always paired with an offers action. Conduct progress action first, followed immediately by the offers action of the same thing. Progress action gives the abbreviated name of a specific progress card. Abbreviations are A for adaptation, B for breakthrough, followed by the first letters of each word in the card's title. Ah, so A slash E E would mean. Adapt adaptation energy efficient is what that means. So you remove that card 
If it's got an award, give them the money. Um, and that's it, right? Okay. So let's hang on. Let's go back. Because one of these way back here at the beginning or near the beginning was another one and we ignored it, right? So it's like ALB plus offers, right? Um, so instead, what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to stick this back in the deck somewhere, like down here. Um, and then I'll give this a little bit of a shuffle just so we can mix it up a little bit. Because now we know what that is, right? So this is changing things up a little. Uh, but it's all random anyway, isn't it? Um, right, so it's mixed in there somewhere. Not shuffled terribly well, but... Right, so... But I think technically that would have meant that this low body mass card with the money, if that actually worked, wouldn't have been available anymore. It would just be this one without the money. Uh, but since we didn't play it at all, I'll just stick it back in there and maybe it'll come up later on. But anyway, this one means that the top uh, energy efficient card, which is the build three adaptation, goes away. But because it's got one money on it, they um, get one money from doing that. And then we've got offers two, four with a produce. So any produce ones, God damn it, you've got rid of the um, explore that I wanted. Uh, um, so any of these go, these two go away. They don't get any money for them because there's no produce. Uh, oh, that's a move eight or explore three though. I'll take that. Damn it, edge. Um, competitors. What does that do? Oh. Awesome. If revealed during a competition office action phase, you lose two money. Bums. Of course I do. Why wouldn't I lose too much? <laughs> oh, the, another revelation there, though. Oh, that's... Oh, oh. Well, fortunately, here we are with seven cards. That is the minimum... No, sorry, the maximum you can have to do a research action. If you have more than seven cards in your hand, you cannot do a research action. So I have seven, which means I'm going to research this and this so i've got the the third revelation card so i've now got revelation one two three and i've got an explore card which is awesome um so what this means now is i can play a revelation i can play those three revelations and get that going all the way around um and so i draw that and i draw that to replace those and if I was, hmm, I suppose if I was smart, I could have done the play at the beginning of my turn, take two turns in a row, and then I could have just done that and then instantly play the revelations. But uh, I am good with that. So hopefully it doesn't screw me over on the next turn somehow. So right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards. I am not going to be able to do any research for a bit. Competition. Ooh, revelation again. Triton, damn you. Ugh, that's annoying. Right. He gets an explore thing. Ugh, bleh. Special discovery. Oh, awesome. Um, discard this tile, draw any three tile. Well, that's just a kick in the teeth, isn't it? So he gets a really fancy one. Oh, of course. You get... Exo microbes again. So you get two more money. Uh, and a gen genetics one, which he ignores completely. And a P1. And he gets to do a base. Awesome. And he's got a contract, I think. But we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I have two. Industrial. That is not a valid thing, so he doesn't get anything extra. But... Now, he's got uh, bases in three regions beyond Jupiter. Ouch. So he gets um, 
this contract. Damn it. So he's got the five money from that. Ouch. One, two, three, four, five. He's tearing away from me. Um, this is not good. And... Doesn't have two bases beyond Uranus. Doesn't have three bases in one region. Doesn't have bases on four sites containing water or life. Well, he's got bases on two sites containing water. Uh, life, I mean. Um, yeah, so that's big. Dang it. Nuts. Nuts, 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 nuts. That's really annoying. Um, right, but... I am now going to play my three Revelations cards. So this basically gives me Revelation 3. Which means I move this black cube. One. Two. And then back to three. Which means... Instead of like with genetics, I chose one of these cards. The brown ones. With uh, Revelations, I get to choose one of these blue, black ones. Or whatever they are. Blue ones. I am going to pick energy field now why would i want to pick this well first uh it's got two money so i get two money for doing that second um regardless of what i picked i have two progress cards now so that's two progress cards so i get that contract which moves me up another three money one two three and the thing with this now this is this is a, a long term project. So energy fields, all my bases are considered to be secure in addition to whatever else they are. So now all of my bases, my my spaceport, my industrial, my um, industrial out here, are secure bases as well. What that means is, when built, I gain one money for each base in this region belonging to an opponent. Unfortunately, there aren't any bases in those regions that belong to an opponent um, but later on in the Starfarers era we are going to be you know spoilers here we're going to be running into aliens possibly um, it's not guaranteed but we're we're possibly going to run into aliens and there's a type of alien they're basically kind of known as known by their classes um, there's you know like the smart alien race is, is called minds, and the economically minded one is called econs. There's a race that are labelled as phobes, so they're basically, you know, hostile, xenophobic, whatever. Uh, and in that case, if you uh, reveal those to be in the system you're exploring, you're, and you don't have this, this energy fields um, breakthrough, then you are kicked out and sent back to Seoul, basically, which is a huge, huge disadvantage. Now, with this, I can ignore that, and I can basically say, yeah, no, I don't care that you're xenophobic, I'm just going to swat you out of the way, or whatever, you know, basically, like, make an energy field around my base or something so you can't get to me, um, and ignore them, and then I just reap whatever benefits are, are there as normal and they don't get kicked out so this is a really useful one because it can really if you don't have that it can really screw you up and i've only not had that in one game and it did screw me up <laughs> so right um so that's me now it's competition uh, what's grabbing a swig of water there um right competition time so uh offers one two and produce so that means these go away they get replaced by oh there's another genetics and that is not an edge that's just a special one. It's a, a deep space probe, so it's like the near space probe from the previous era, except you, it's, it's for the planeteers, basically. So you place the discovery tile on an empty site and gain any immediate reward. So that's quite nice. Um, now, what have I got? I've got two genetics. Hmm. 
the hum. So that's now it's my turn. So there's some interesting options now. I can do the explore three um, and uh, and do that. Get Callisto. I can. I can potentially move from here over to Taron and then maybe next turn do a double turn with my uh, intercept card and go explore build boom um, which will get me the two bases beyond Uranus contract uh, or I could so I could do the explore I could do the uh, move over there I could do a research and get the other genetics up there and that one and then play that at a later date hmm. Hmm. dang I think getting this is the lowest priority. Getting the explore on Callisto might be nice. In fact, what I could do is play, because um, it's the beginning of my turn basically, uh, I could play the intercept now and do the explore and build a base. If I can, that's B5. Uh, and yes, I can because I've got a shielded build 5 right there. And it's doubled anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, maybe I will do that. So I'm going to play this uh, intercept now. And I'm going to just do the straight up. Uh, I'm going to play this. I mean, basically, I'm, I'm not using that one. I'm just going to do a straight explore 3. Uh, because I don't have any other explore options. Um, and I'm going to explore that uh, Callisto tile. Aha! Here we go. Oh, that's perfect. If this if this works, this is going to be perfect. So I've got water and life. I get two money. Uh, and I get genetics one. So my genetics counter goes up by one. So if I can get that other genetics next turn... Then I can spend that and I can get that. But we'll see, because he might do an office thing and bugger me up. Um, and then for my second turn, because I played the interrupt card, I am... Ooh, now. Take two turns in a row. Now, hang on. So I'm finishing my first turn. Because I have four cards, I draw a card. Uh, build five or gain two money. Um, then it's the start of my next turn. So I could just do the research action now. And not build a base there. This is a horrible feeling. The next card he's going to draw is Callisto. <laughs> that would completely screw me. Because then he will build a base there. Oh no, hang on, will he? Uh, buh, 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 buh. Competition team not present. No, he won't build a base there. Ooh, okay, so I don't care really. Um, yeah, I'm going to do the research action actually. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do the uh, build. Although, if I... Uh, yeah, so hang on. So, because I have one genetics already. If I did a build action, I could build a bio lab. Which would get me one more genetics. So I'd go up to the second spot. And I already have a genetics. So I could just play this. And not... Spend like... Uh, and not do the... Uh, the research action, but 
Uh, swings and roundabouts, because then I won't get this either, and that would be quite nice to have. Um, screw it. I'm going to do the research action. I'm going to do this research because I can get another explore there as well. So I'm going to do this before that goes away because for all I know he's going to get offers one and two next turn. Although he already had an offers one and two. But, um... Oh, there's another genetics. That's quite handy. Um, and there's another one there. So that that's interesting because if I now have two genetics, I'm going to get a genetics anyway if I build a base hmm. okay uh, that's interesting right let's see what he does competition another genetics oh he's got Pluto but I'm on Pluto so screw you um, I think that just means that he uh, draws uh, another card uh, uh, uh. Uh, yeah, unless you have, unless you or the com unless you or the competition already have a base there, so discard the card, draw another. Uh, right, so Pluto does not happen. The Apatus, however, oh look at this one, Genetics Two Revelations One. The hell, that was a brilliant card. Um, oh, actually, but that's that wouldn't have happened in my era anyway. But um, anyway, uh, as the Apatus, he's got uh, a base. Uh, a dude on the Apatus, which is another one of Saturn's moons. It's starting to spread out. Uh, right. Now, here's the thing. Right now, I could spend both the genetics here. Uh, but... They're not, they shouldn't be going anywhere. I should build my base now on Callisto with my build 5, which I, well, I easily have because of the industrial thing, um, which will get me a base there, which will get me my three bases in one region contract, which is quite nice, get me a bit more money. And then I know he won't be getting that. Um, now also, I've got one site with water, one site with water, one site with water or life there. So if I just could build another site that had water or life, that would get me this contract, which would get me five, which would be quite nice as well. Um, but I am going to build a bio lab on Callisto. So that's my action. Though I'm just going to use my infra bio lab. There we go. I move my genetics up one because that's what bio lab on a um, a life tile does, um, and that gets me three bases in one region. One, two, three, which gets me this contract, which is three money. One, two, three. And there we go. Okay, not bad at all. Competition, Titania Ariel. Oh, you're going off to Titania then, uh, I believe. Although, hang on, let me just look that up again because of that weird phrasing. Um, actually, no, uh, sorry, Titania Ariel. Uh, when drawing one, conduct a site action at the listed site that contains a competition team. So there is a, like, it's Titania or Ariel, but there is one team, uh, Ariel. So we're going to do it there, and that is drawing an E2 tile. Which is going to be a 2T, which gets him two money. 
and a P1 which gets him uh, potentially a produce action or like a money when he does produce action uh, and they also I believe put the base down Confuse the team is present then remove the team place base right um, also I just realized something that all these guys have built bases so they should have been removed but that doesn't really affect anything but it just means they're more available um, and this dude as well so survey says damn it no I knew it spaceport that totally buggers me so if he's built a spaceport on a site with no gravity penalty uh, I believe that's site has no gravity penalty uh, if the competition has at least two other bases it takes the first beyond marker you bugger oh that's gonna mess me up big time um, right that's annoying next era I'm going to be at a severe disadvantage because <laughs> I think that means he takes three turns before I get to do anything in the next era. Wow. 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 That just... Wow, that just got really bad. <laughs> ah, it's not gone well. Usually, plans his goes really well for me, but um, at, this, at this point... And the hilarious thing is, like at this point, I'm being hammered by a random draw. <laughs> like... There isn't even a plan to this. It's just the way it's turning out is just hammering me, which is hilarious, quite frankly. Um, okay. But, you know, we, we deal with it. Um, right. I'm going to... What am I going to do? Uh... So I want to do some genetics. I want to blow both of them. I think I want to blow both of them, really. Might as well spend them. Um, I'm going to smoke them if you got them. I'm going to spend both of them. So I've got genetics too. Uh, putting them in the wrong pile again. Um, now, this means my wheel, my tan block here goes one space around the top again and goes on to onwards to the next one again so it wraps around um that means i pass the top i get a second uh genetics adaptation and i am going to get this so this is the radiation resistant one it requires any other adaptation which i already have your move and build actions are shielded from radiation. So now I don't care about radiation at all. Like I don't need to have shielded actions to move anywhere. I am done. This is finito. Um, now, I mean, I was using the shielded actions anyway. Uh, but now I can just completely ignore it. So that is good. I get one money from that as well because it's got one money on the card. Uh, and that's me. So... Let's see what happens next. BPN and offers 3-4. So Breakthrough PN, Probe Network. This goes away. Um, so he takes this. Uh, he gets the two money for it, I believe. Two money. And offers 3-4. And if there's a research involved anyway, they get a bonus but they don't so that's over here one oh crap there's an edge hack uh what does the hack do discard all research all research cards from your hand and offer boxes replenish empty offers so this one has gone away anyway do I have any research in my hand? I don't believe I do. No, so that's good. Um, and then one more. Damn it, another one. 
Hostile microbes. Oh, are you kidding? Oh, oh phew, okay. But, um, so hostile microbes is um, discard all genetics cards from your hand and offer boxes replenish empty offers. So this is not good because we, we're running out of cards here. Um, so this goes away anyway because it's the edge. But that means this goes away as well because that's a genetics thing. So now I've got two more to draw. There's one more genetics at least. And then there's that. Right, okay, so no more edges. But we are down to the last three cards. So that means I am buggered if he gets more offers. Um, because now what's going to happen is... Draw past being emptied. I take one more turn and the era ends. That's it. I need to move. Because my plan... My one remaining plan involved going to Caron, um, which is going to be a move two. Um, I need three moves basically. And I've got three cards left, so I'm going to move two anyway with this. So I'm going to hop, hop over to Caron. I'm going to hope he doesn't draw Caron. Uh, otherwise, that scuppered my plan. But he might. So we'll see. I've got more than five cards as well, so I'm not drawing a card. But let's see what happens. Frack! Ah! Uh! Damn you. This has just ruined everything. Um, offers one, three, four. He has just raided the deck. I get one more turn after this, and I can't do what I wanted to do, which was to build the base on Caron. Well, that sucks. Bums. All right, well. Ugh, what a frustrating competition this was uh so they go away and they just come out here whatever they are and uh that's not an edge but we've drained the deck bugger so i get one more turn that's it that is all i get take one more turn and then the era ends so Uh, yeah, so I was faffing around too much with the uh, upgrades and things, wasn't I? Although I did get the radiation resistant one just in time, so that was good. And I've got the breakthrough energy fields one, which is also good. Uh, huh. Is there any, any way? Oh, I can't even get. Damn it. So I can't get the four asteroid bases one, obviously. Can't get the two bases beyond Uranus, because I can't build a base on Charon. And I can't get a base on four sites uh, containing water or life. <sighs> Poop. Well. I think I've got this explore tile. Place the discovery tile on an empty site, gain any immediate rewards. There is an E3 remaining. They are the most valuable ones usually. I could play it on that and hope that I get a bunch of good stuff. Uh, but that is basically it. All I can do that's going to get me anything is exploring. Um, I don't have anything else. I mean, I can get two money just for free here, which eh, maybe, I don't know, it could be better than what I, I, I draw there. I could do a produce. I've only got one produce, but um, yeah, the way I've actually set this up, I've got no 
I actually built no refineries this turn. So the produce on my refinery on my legacy production would only get me two as well. Yeah, um, it's a risk. I can get a guaranteed two or I can get a possible two plus some other stuff. I might be able to get a genetics or a revelation or something if I use my deep space probe on Titan. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do my deep space probe, place the discovery tile on an empty tile and gain any immediate rewards. And I'm going to do it on Titan and it is going to be... <gasps> <laughs> wow okay critical mission delay lose two money discard this tile and draw another one oh my god okay I lose two money fantastic <laughs> but I draw another E3 ooh now that's not horrible it's a bit annoying though because so it's exo microbes exotic elements I get two money so yay I've got my money that I just lost back. It also has a genetics one, so yay profit. That's uh, that's better than before. It would have been a P2. Um, or it was a P2, but I have no opportunity to build a base on it. So I can't keep hold of it for next time, unfortunately. Um, and it would have been a base plus two. So had I built a base here, had I been on here and building a base, it would have cost me eight instead of six. So that's basically it. That's the end. Let's see. Uh, I get one more turn. Competition doesn't get one. The end. So that is the end of this era. Um... Now, decision time. It is 10.30. It would be the same, the same thing would be to finish the stream like we did last time. Basically, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, you know, talk, about, talk about the game, um, talk about stuff, uh, set up the staff errors or at least flip the board over and show you the board. Um, and then we'll um, carry on next time. That would be the sensible thing to do because, yeah, because the staff areas one takes a bit longer than these. And this has taken like two and a half hours as it is, um, just because I've been talking through everything and pondering and so on. I'm not in a tearing rush. Um, so yeah, I'm going to uh, continue uh, with the staff errors era next time when the next time is I think uh, just for this week I'm going to look at doing that on Sunday afternoon largely because I'm switching over to a Friday only stream schedule next week and the week after and so on for April basically just so I can have a bit of a break and, you know, be able to do other stuff in the evening that isn't streaming. Because <laughs> um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is, is quite draining after, you know, working all day. Um, doesn't give me much free time to do anything um, or anything else. So um, I am going to actually do the stream on Sunday and that means I don't have to do the stream on Monday or something, basically. Um, I can keep like, all my weeknights uh, free apart from Friday and then we can finish it off like before April or two um, so yeah I'll do it on Sunday probably about 3 o'clock Pacific um, and I know if you're in the UK or I think if you're in the UK the clocks have gone back or will go back then I don't know when your clocks go back. You, you go back on a weird day now because we went back uh, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I don't know why. It, no, I hate the I hate the clocks going back and forward. Like it's just so annoying. It's so stupid. And everyone talks about getting rid of it. And you know, they usually don't make any moves to do that. But I think Europe's decided that they're going to actually stop doing that or give countries the options of stopping doing that if they're in Europe. 
uh, which obviously won't affect Britain because it won't be in Europe by then. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it is, it's just stupid. It's I don't know why we still do it. Um, but anyway, be that as it may, this. Um, so yeah, this was a really... A really frustrating one. Uh, well, I mean, were, I mean, it was fun, but it was, you know, the competition did some really annoying things, which is, it is frustrating, but it's also um, actually what's great about this, because, you know, I, I end up shaking my fist at a pile of cards, because <laughs> it's buggered my plans. Um, so, yeah, because first it got the first beyond things, that utterly that is such a big pain because next like i said next turn i mean the staff era's era i but i'm pretty sure he gets um or they get uh three extra turns or something um oh well it's even better than that um they get to put two teams on stars which is a huge advantage and they start by taking three consecutive turns so holy crap that is horrendous oh that is that puts me at a huge disadvantage that is horrific um and yeah and then at the end there they just they did an offers thing and that used up the rest of the deck and that meant I couldn't do this um, nuts because if I had done that I could have built a base well I could have explored there and let, let's have a look like, like if I had drawn an E2 there if I had built that what would it be it would be an alien artifact that would have got me two money and one revelation so um, that's from that pile and if I drew it from this pile, I think that was from this pile, it would have been a P1 base minus 3. So it wouldn't have been a life or water. So if I drew on the second one on this one, I would have had a water. But um, So yeah, that wouldn't have helped me get this either way. So that's kind of... I'm not as upset about that now, really. Uh, it does deny me that two bases beyond Uranus, though, which would have been really nice. Because uh, they don't get that because they've got a base at Uranus and a base at Neptune. If they got if they'd got this car on base, they would have got that um, contract. So poop. Um, so yeah, that didn't go terribly well. I'm quite a f quite a few points behind. I'm uh, I'm on twenty six and they're on thirty three. And I may conceivably actually be on 24 if I look back at the video and find that I uh, miscalculated that and that should have been an unshielded move. Um, yeah. Bums. So, and I'm going to start staff errors at a huge disadvantage, which is quite terrible. Um, so... Um, let me just have a quick check of something. Uh, where was that? It was over here. It was in here. And it was down here. So, uh, yeah, I did promise to talk about something here. So, um, uh, what was it? Uh, Jack, Jack Star, if you are watching, hello. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Jack Star, if you are watching, uh, thank you for your comment on the last video. Um, you said that your curiosity was piqued uh by this um uh, because you didn't even know that solo games existed and they do um there are many solo games in fact um a lot of um a lot of the 
Euro games now, so they're the the more mainstream kind of games um, that you would find in a lot of board game shops uh, and cafes and so on. Uh, but there are there are quite a few Euro games uh, that are you know worker placement things and and all that sort of stuff. Um, but they have solo modes. Uh, I think uh, uh, there's a rather famous designer called Uwe Rosenberg. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of his games also have a solo mode to them. They're more... Um, well, they're interesting because they're more like puzzles. Um, so you're... You know, it's, it's all about you know trying to get the most points or something, or, or but you're trying to do it in the most efficient way. Like we're trying to get you know trying to get the most points in like twenty turns or something like that. Um, so you know, there's there's a kind of subset of these games that are just like puzzle like things that you just sort of sit down and do them on your own, and um, you know they'll be like you have to get. A certain number of points or survive a certain number of turns or whatever um and uh and, and then you know if you do then you, you 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 win you know in quotes um so um there's quite a lot of them there's uh like uh, uh i'm pretty sure yeah the harvard definitely has one um I think Fields of Odin, ha uh, not Fields of Odin, uh, Feast for Odin has an, has one, uh, Fields of Isle has one, like the Rosenberg ones again. Um, Terraforming Mars is another sci-fi game um, that, uh, that, my relationship with that game is interesting. Um, I really like it, the theme, um, but... As I've got more expansions for it, I think it's kind of got really bloated, and um, it's not that's not working for me. <laughs> it frustrates me a lot, uh, and the end game slows down horrifically with that one with multiplayer games, um, or in, in my experience anyway. Um, so I'm currently on a I'm a, currently a bit off it, but it does have a solo mode, which probably isn't as anywhere near as frustrating. <laughs> um, so that does have a solo mode. That is also a, a kind of kind of a solar system exploration game, except it's not like this because you don't actually move pieces throughout the solar system. It's all kind of built with cards. Because um, it's supposedly a game about terraforming Mars, but it's kind of a small part of the actual game at this point because there's so many other things you're doing everywhere else in the solar system. Uh, it's a very odd thing. But um, that's got solo mode. Um, there's quite a lot of war games that have solo modes. Uh, well, there are... Let me rephrase that. Many historical board games have solo modes. And in fact, there are many historical board games that are only solo mode. Uh, they don't actually have... They are specifically designed for one person. They do not have, or, or if they do have rules for two or more people, they're kind of there as an afterthought, and it's more like you can cooperate with each other or something to, to achieve the goals. Um, but I have a few of those. I'm getting a few more as well on the way. Um, there's uh, um, one called, uh, or a couple called Enemy Coast Ahead. Uh, they're also by GMT Games, who make this one. Um, one is you're basically um, planning uh, and preparing and doing the Dam Busters raid like in 1940 whatever 3 I think it was um, 1942 or 1943 I can't remember but the Dam Busters raid where they sent the Lancaster bombers in to drop the bouncing bombs and uh, blow up some of the German dams uh, you get to do that the whole darn thing if you want like you can do little bits of it like little parts of it as well but you you can do the whole mission from start to finish and it'll take you i don't know three or four hours or something um so there's that i've just got another one like the other enemy coast ahead game is the do little raid 
which is, uh, I'd never heard of it before, but it sounds quite interesting. Um, it's a, uh, a raid that America did on Japan after Pearl Harbor. And it was, as far as I know, I don't know an awful lot about the history of this one, but as far as I know, it was basically done so that they could strike back at Japan uh, after they they did their Pearl Harbor strike. And it was kind of a, uh, I think it was supposed to be a kind of morale boost type thing and also to show the Japanese that, you know, actually, you know what, America can actually come over and bomb your uh, home islands. Um, so, uh, yeah, and they've made a game out of that, or they made a solo game out of that. So it's like Dam Busters in that you prepare and you plan and you do all these things and then you, you send your planes out to do the, the raids. Um, so uh, there's another couple I'm getting, one's called Warfighter, which is a uh, purely a card-based kind of tableau game. Uh, and you play a squad of soldiers in World War II uh, you pick your people, um, you equip them with equipment, guns, medical kits, you know, binoculars, whatever, um, and you send them out on a mission, and you put down locations, and um, you, it's almost like a sort of choose, it's like a sort of choose your adventure type thing, um, but you're actually making the adventure as you go along uh, by drawing cards randomly. And there might be like, oh, you enter this house and oh my god, there's like a flamethrower team there and, uh, and they're, they're, there's a machine gun group hiding behind them or something. You know, and you have to deal with that and they'll attack you and you'll attack them and you may get killed or, or injured or go into a panic or whatever. So that sounds like a really interesting little thing to do and I want to get that to try it on stream at some point. So that will be happening in, in April for sure. Uh, and the other solo game I'm getting is um, U-Boat Leader. So that, if you've seen the film Das Boot, um, which is, uh, if you haven't heard of that, uh, it's a very famous uh, German film uh, about um, a German U-Boat that is uh, basically going through like the North Atlantic and Mediterranean and stuff, I think. Um, and they're hunting allied ships, but they're getting hunted back. <laughs> um, and it's really interesting. I and mean, it's a really, it's a classic film. It's like, um, I think it's about three hours long as well. So it's, it's super tense. Um, it's really, really good. It's a really good film. And it doesn't, you know, it's one of those weird ones where you're like playing the, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're watching, you know, your protagonists are you know, the Axis, right? They're, um, they're Germans, but not all of them are Nazis, if you get what I mean. Like, they're, um, uh, I think they had, like, one, um, I don't know what you call them, like, a attache, or, you know, the, you know, they had the, whatever, the propaganda officer, or whatever, you know, they're, they're that one guy that's, like, in the party, and then most of the rest of the, the crew are just, they're just German sailors you know they're not particularly enamored with the cause or whatever they're just part of the the navy and they're doing their job um so it's interesting like um you know because you you do get some kind of sympathy from for them as people because you know they're stuck in a tin can and it's getting bombed underwater and it's it's a horrible experience you know no matter whose side you're on there um but um yeah it's a really good film it's a really powerful film but anyway U-boat leader basically is that you're in that situation. You are running a U-boat and you're hunting Allied shipping, and they're hunting you back, and you may get killed. Um, but it's weird in in a, a game because you're you know you're like, well, I'm technically the bad guys here still. <laughs> like you don't have that you know human breakdown like you do in the film. So it, it'll be interesting to give that a go. Um, but, I mean, the reason I got that was because it was the U-boats in, you know, the Atlantic and, and the Mediterranean and so on. And there is, a, there is a game where you can play the U.S. submarines in the Pacific called Gato Leader um, after one of the submarine types there. But you, uh, um, I'm not really that into the Pacific theatre stuff. 
Um, so I thought, um, you know, even though the U boat leader one is a bit more, uh, you know, weirder for, for actually playing the bad guys, I'd rather have that because I actually prefer that. You know, I'm more interested in that sort of European theatre. Um, but anyway, uh, after all the, the rambling, the point is there are many solo games. Uh, they come in all, all sorts of shapes and sizes. Some of them are, are quick, some of them are really long, drawn out things. Um, you can, of course, play. There are, there are games that you can play, um, you know, that are designed for more people that you can just play by yourself anyway, just by playing. You do the standard sort of play both sides to the best of your ability kind of thing. Um, you know, which you can do with a lot of games anyway. Uh, the trouble comes when if there's hidden information in the game then you can't really do that very well because you obviously don't want to know what the other side is doing um, so there's, there's plenty of games where it doesn't work but um, there are a lot of games that do have solo modes um, they are they can be very different the ones more you know some are like the the Dan Busters one and the do that one they're more like a narrative thing um, you know, you're kind of building up a story as you go along. Um, games like this are, um, you know, this is where you actually got a really good, unpredictable opponent, um, which can really scupper your plans. And I, I, this, I, this has actually kind of got me into solo gaming because I wouldn't have really given it the time of day before because it's like, if I want a solo game, I'll play a computer game or something. But this is actually interesting because the opponent is. While they're not smart, they act like they're smart. Like they're they're doing things that, that that screw you up, and that's I like that kind of interaction in a game where you're trying to do something and and you your plans are foiled and you have to adapt and so on. Um, so I don't know how many more games are like this um, that have that kind of solo bot uh, in quotes because it's not again it's not really a bot. Um, because the other thing you'll find is you'll have there, there are quite a few war games that uh, that GMT do, like the coin games, the counterinsurgency games, um, and Churchill is another one where they have bots that are like they they're, they're basically a big flowchart that you um, you just go through like you know is this happening yes then do this no then then do something else and you go down the list and so on it can take. I, I personally don't like those because it takes a while to get used to the language in the sheet. You know, sometimes it's over abbreviate, over abbreviated and so on. Um, you know, it's not clear. Uh, there's lots of looking back and forth and so on. And that, yeah, I don't. The the big problem I find with that is that it becomes really predictable because you know what the bot after a while. You know what the bot's going to do. Um, and I don't like that kind of solo thing. Um, you know, I want there to be that random element like this, you know, which is, is brilliant. Um, so, yeah, there. but there's all sorts. There's like the puzzle things, there's the sort of predictable bot things, there's the unpredictable things like this, there's the narrative things, you know, so there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do with, with solo games. Uh, and I will... Over the next month, at least, over April, uh, I want to be trying some of those out and showing them off, basically, and, uh, and seeing how well we do. Um, so um, there's a bunch of things on the way. And also, uh, I do want to try and do a game of Twilight Struggle, uh, but I will use the app. Uh, there's a, a Steam, or there's a Steam version of it, um, but I'll use an app for that. Um, and uh, you know, basically play against an actual AI, um, and uh, we can play. You know, we can see how that goes basically, because that's a really good. That's actually a board game as well. Uh, it was a classic board game that was number one on Board Game Geek for like five years. Um, you know, so it's essentially among the people who are keen enough to go online and uh, rate board games, it was the most popular game, the most highly rated game for five years. Uh, and it is brilliant. It's all about you basically do the Cold War um, from start to finish, and it is amazing. It's really good. So yeah, that's on the list as well. 
Um, but anyway, I rambled on long enough. Um, almost uh, 20 odd minutes there. We're just yapping away while you were just staring at the screen at the game here with my hands moving in and out. Um, so um, I think what should we do? Um, let's just go through the end before we finish. Let's go through the end of the, uh, the era here so that we can at least finish this part. Um, so um, competition gains. So first up, competition gains x money where x is equal to the competition base discovery pair with the highest production value. Uh, do you have one? don't really do you um but it specifies base discovery pair because that doesn't work i mean that's a base and a discovery tile but that i suppose that i suppose that does work really it's still a base it, uh, there's a base there and it's got a production value of one so it gets one money basically there we go uh, i can choose one discovery tile on the board that has a p value and one of my bases while i don't have anything that's better than a p1 to to basically move over into the uh, legacy production um, i've got a p2 here but that's the same as this basically so i might as well just keep the one i have uh, my infra cards stay here. Uh, progress cards stay here. Um, do do do. All the play, all the playing pieces go off the board. Competition teams are bases. Blah blah blah. Put all them back in the box. Blah blah blah. Right. So all these go away. Um, Basically, everything comes off the board, essentially. So, uh, all the teams come back. Um, they're all there. They've got the first beyond. Uh, the bases go back. All my teams come back. Uh, my bases come back. Again, I didn't really build an awful lot of bases in this um, thing. Uh, in this era, which is a bit uh, disappointing, really. But again, usually I don't play the solo game. Oops, sorry, nudge the camera. Uh, I don't usually play the solo game, so um, you know I'm not used to how it works uh, as much as I am with the uh, um, the full all player game, human player game. Uh, right, so we got all this lot, get all these back, I'm just getting this off the board. Uh, so I'm not going to set up everything, I'm just going to show you what the Staff Errors board looks like. Let me get all that off, because that's all done. Um, that's me all done here. Keep those. Um, that's going to get shuffled up later on. So let's just have a quick look at what Starfarer's board is like. And this is it. So, I will have to move things around um, because now we're going to be using this. Um, so these will have to come off uh, because all of this stuff is now relevant. And this will have to come off as well. Because all of that stuff is relevant. Uh, and I've just stuck that there. Haven't I? Uh, I'll just stick this down here. Because of course I wanted to show you the board. Oh, there you go. Um, and I've just covered it up. So, um, yeah. So here, this is where we are now. So now we're, we're going out into the, the wider universe beyond the solar system. So we're starting off here in the Sol region. And again, we've got shield factories. We start off with three teams instead of two, uh, but the uh, competition is going to start off with two of them already out there, um, which is really annoying, because uh, like I said, that is a huge uh, head start. 
Um, the fact that it's really rigged against me, um, because if neither side got the first beyond, then the competition would uh, would still be ahead. Like um, they get to put their teams on. Um, they basically get to put their teams on Alpha Centauri here and Lumen Sixteen, which is a binary brown dwarf that's also nearby. Uh, now the, the reason that's a huge advantage is that in this era, this is where it goes slightly different from before. Whenever you move to a new region, you end up here on this little track. So each of these stars has a little three box track. And you start off at the, th the, the outermost part of it. And that's it. That's all you can do when you go there. And then you, uh, the start of every turn, every every one of your turns, you move this, you move all your teams down one box, basically, if they're on that track. And that's all they can do. And then the third turn, you do it again. And then the fourth turn is when you're actually on the star, and then you can actually start exploring and building and doing all that stuff. Um, and I'll go over all this properly. You'll notice as well that these numbers are immense. They're like 30. This is the move numbers. So you're going to need like uh, to get from Sol to Wolf 1061. You need 70 move just to do that. Um, and you may have noticed like because this is a Starfarer's deck that we were using for the competition. But you may have noticed there's a few... Uh, Card, there's cards in here that have multipliers now so um, that means like you, you have and the way that works here is like you if you had a move six and you had um, a move four uh, obviously you just add those together you get ten but now if you have a multiplier card and you have another multiplier card well let, let's do it one so what you do here, unlike normal maths, you add first and then multiply. So this actually gives you 6 plus 4 is 10, times 4 is 40. So that gives you a move of 40. If you had this as well, then you do um, 6 plus 4 is 10, but you don't do times 4 and then times 4, I think. Do you? Hang on, so you, you do... No, yeah, you do. Sorry. Um, what you essentially do is that you add these first and then you multiply these together. So 4 times 4 is 16. And then you multiply this by this. It's the same kind of thing, basically. It's, it's 10 times 4 is 40 times 4, 160, which is the same as 10 times 16, right? Um, so you can get some really big moves by doing that basically you can get moves that are up to like hundreds like multiple hundreds um, But you have to get those multipliers to do it so uh, There's also a whole bunch of new cards that are under here um, Which I I'll, I'll show you them all next time basically uh, But there's a whole bunch of new cards like adaptations and breakthroughs. These are still available um, but the other big thing is the, and now I am going to put this on the board. Uh, the other big thing is what's going on down here, uh, which is you get all these colonies that you can build. So this is a whole new step. Um, and there, it, that's where the brain burning comes in. Um, like there's a lot of, um, thinking involved in that which slow, slows this part of the game down um, because uh, you basically do a move, explore, build, so you build your bases and then you can colonize and that is an action but you can only colonize a certain number of points worth, you can only build a certain number of points worth of colony basically. And colonies, are these, there are these tiles that correspond to these. Um, and they will give you more bonuses. Like they'll give you more money for every adaptation or every two adaptations you have in play, for example. Or every breakthrough that you have, you get money for. Or whenever a, an opponent colonizes, you get one money and so on. 
Um, so that gives you a lot, and they give you a bonus at the end of the game. So um, there's a whole other dimension to the game now in this phase, which is why I don't want to do it now, because otherwise I'll be here till 2 in the morning, and that won't be very good. Um, so we'll do this on Sunday um, at 3 o'clock, I think. That would be a good enough time for it, I think. Um, and, um, and we'll see how it goes, and then we'll finish this off. But it's not looking fantastic for me right now because, like I said, I'm at uh, I'm at 26 and they're at uh, 34. So uh, it's not looking great for me right now. But there there is a lot of potential for catching up in in the Star Fairy Zero. Um, you know, so it's it's still anyone's game basically. Um, but anyway, I am going to go because. Um, I spent uh, quite a lot of time rambling on at the end there, but um, uh, hopefully, uh, Jack, uh, if you are still watching, uh, probably on YouTube, uh, but if you uh, if you are still watching, that hopefully answered your questions. Um, uh, but yeah, I'll be showing off a few more of those games over the coming month um, or so anyway, and then after that, we'll get back to video games again. Uh, back to Assassin's Creed Odyssey because um, that's what I also well that's what I usually stream um, this is all a bit of an experiment um, but uh, I do play board games quite a lot as well that's my other big hobby really um, right anyway I am going to leave it at that so um, hopefully that all made sense um, and uh, we'll, we'll finish finish the game on Sunday so uh, with that uh, thank you for joining me and I will see you next time ta-ta